Okay, again, this is part of a series. Be sure to check out the link in the description to the full playlist. Uh, and we've been working with Vim here, just going over some, not necessarily beginner stuff, not necessarily advanced stuff, somewhere in the middle stuff. Uh, and today we're gonna be looking a little bit more at auto-completion. So let's go ahead and, again, this is our file structure here. We've got an index file, JavaScript folder with some JavaScripts and then some subfolders, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go into the Vim index file. And again, be sure to watch previous videos before you watch this one because we're going to be glossing over some stuff that we've already gone over. But uh, you may remember that um, we worked on some autocomplete stuff. So right now I'm in this file. So I should be able to do something like type in uh, C, uh, SC and hit uh, Control N and it will autocomplete based on words that have already been typed inside this folder or, or this file. So and if there's uh, more than one match, it will give you this drop down menu. Like if I did S, you can see it says script and also source for the uh, script source there. Um, that's great. But lots of times, especially like when you're working with programming, whether it be C and you have a bunch of uh, library files or Python, or you're working in an HTML file and you're going to be want or writing some JavaScript and you're going to have some. Uh, functions you're going to be calling from another JavaScript file, even though this is the wrong link here since we moved it. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our main.js file. So I'm going to say find main.js, and I can hit enter. Oh, I got to save what I'm working on here before I switch files. And now both will be open at the same time, they'll both be in uh, Vim's buffers. And uh, so again, main.js. This is our main JS. You can see we have the cool function, the bad function, and the better function. Let's go ahead and do B and go back to our index. So now both are open. If I colon ls down here, you can see that it lists both those files as being open. It also lists where I am in each file. Um, so let's say that we're working in here and I want to use that bad function or the better function. Well, now that they're both open in the buffer, I can. I can t come in here and I can type in BE control N and it will type out th that function for me because it's auto-completing based on all files I have in buffers. I can type in BA and hit control N and it'll be bad function. And again, if there's more than one option, if I just hit B and I hit control N, it tells me uh, body, it, go, it tells me better, it tells me bad function. Uh, so I can pick which one I want. And body's just because it's, you know, that's not a function, that's a tag here in my HTML file. There's also the uh, cool file, a cool function. And if I was to go back, backspace a bit, you'll see that it's showing me options here, CO, which I just typed, but it shows me the cool function and also inside that file I call the console function uh, for JavaScript. But it also lists what file you're pulling it from, which is convenient if there's more than one file. Uh, maybe I have you know, some words used in different files and I wanna make sure I'm grabbing from the right one for this project. Uh, but that's it, I just wanted to show you that, that once you have files opened up in a buffer, in fact, let's just open up another one. So I'm gonna say find JS and I'm gonna hit tab and I'm gonna choose uh, this test.js. That's right, you do have to save, oops, save what you're working on before you move to another one, which is a good idea, you don't wanna accidentally close out without making your, your changes. Uh, find JS and we will call our test.js file. And um, here I have a Linux function. It's, it's, I'm just gave, giving these functions random names. Uh, so let's go ahead and move back. And there's different ways to move back and forth between these files we'll get into in future tutorials. I'm just gonna type in the name and autocomplete for tab index. And again, if I list out all the open buffers, you can see them all listed there. And now I can come in here and I can type in L control N and you can see log from main.js or the Linux function from test.js. And again, it doesn't know that this is a function, it's just looking for words that have been typed previously, uh, strings I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. So I hope you found this useful. So yeah, it's the same autocomplete we used before, except for instead of just searching the current file we're in, it's autocompleting based on all files we have 
open in the current buffers. I do thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you enjoy my videos regularly, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash mailx1000. There's a link in the description of that, as well as a link to my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. You can also support me there with my PayPal link. At my site, you can also search through all the videos from both my uh, YouTube channels. And um, if you can't support financially, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. I really do appreciate it, and I thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have.